Hello lovely human, how are you today? Today's video, today's SMS, a 7 minute sound might, is about free will and how free will matters even when it comes to helping other people. Um, let me tell you a story. This is going back to 2019, so it's before the pandemic and my, my daughter had moved out and she was... Uh, she just joined her university, so she was going to be uh, living in the university digs. And so we had um, her room vacant. And um, I had gone uh, to my local high street uh, to just do a few errands. And I spotted this man sitting on the pavement. Um, it was quite cold. It was sort of a winter's day in February. And... Um, um, <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, he had a very sweet, gentle, oldish looking dog with him and he was sitting there reading a book. So he, he looked like he was homeless because I couldn't imagine why anyone would sit on a cold pavement uh, on a winter's day unless they were homeless. But what was interesting about him was that he wasn't begging, he wasn't trying to catch people's eye to to get their sympathy um, and he was reading a book. Uh, there was a certain quiet dignity about him and the dog as he sat there enduring the cold um, and sort of wearing their uh, homelessness uh, um, in a very sort of dignified way, or so I thought. Um, and it, it, it sort of, yeah, I, I went, I went up to this man and I had a little chat to him and asked him how how come he was homeless and and he he told me that you know he he and his dog uh, were looking for a place in in the uh, homeless um, hostel but because they don't allow dogs in you know he he was he didn't have anywhere to live. Um, I offered him a coffee and I I began to think you know it's just not right. Uh, for someone who looks like they're educated and probably just fallen on hard times. Uh, and the dog was just adorable. And I just didn't feel that these two people really should be on the streets in this cold weather. And so um, I can be a little bit impulsive, a bit impetuous. Um, I suddenly thought, you know what? I have space in my house. Um, I'll be a good Samaritan and I will offer him to come and stay at my place until he gets himself sorted because he'd said that he was working on something and he was hoping to get a place to live for him and his dog uh, but it might take a few days or a few weeks and so I thought well my daughter's not there and I'm sure my family wouldn't mind of course and when I told them this they, they just looked at me completely aghast you know they could not believe that I would go and do such a thing and I would offer some complete stranger um, to come and live with us. Anyway, uh, I said, look, no, he's not. He seems like a decent man. And come on, you know, we've got a warm home. And, you know, how can we be, how can we be, uh, how can we not be compassionate? So I sort of shouted them down, you know. <laughs> I'm quite embarrassed to think about that now. Anyway, um, I, I said to this, um, this chap, I said, look, um, you could... I'm going to offer you to come and stay with me. Uh, so why don't I meet you tomorrow for a coffee and we can talk about it. And, you know, uh, I'll tell you a little bit about, you know, my situation and where I live. And you can decide whether you want to take up my offer. So I go there next time, uh, next day at the time that we agreed. And I go and I wait in this coffee shop and there's no sign of him. Um, I think that's very odd. You know, for someone... Uh, uh, who is homeless, one would have thought they would jump at this opportunity to have somewhere warm to stay, but it didn't turn out. Uh, I went the following day and I looked for him again in the usual place and he wasn't there. Um, I found out from, you know, my Facebook group that he was around somewhere, that he'd been to a different place and I even left a message for him. I gave my number to him to call me and there was just no response. Um, later on, it turned out that he wasn't actually homeless, uh, that he, he was he was living with his mother and 
whatever the reason, I'm not I'm not going to judge because different people have different reasons why they do what they do. But the point I'm trying to make is that here I was, based on what I had seen, I had immediately made up my own story in my head about what this man's situation was, what he needed, and how I was going to jump in and be his rescuer. And of course, he probably didn't want to be rescued because he actually had a place to go to. Um, why he chose to sit on a cold pavement with his dog uh, as a means to make a little bit of money, I I don't know. And it's probably, yeah, that's where the free will comes in. You know, that's what he chose to do. He did not wear a badge saying I'm homeless. He didn't have a, a little sort of, you know, a sign saying, help me, I'm homeless, give me some money. He wasn't asking for money. He was not begging. I made up this whole story in my head and I decided that I was going to help him. Now, I often remind, remind myself of this story that, you know, sometimes uh, it's okay to to go with your gut or your heart and do what you think is the right thing. If you're not meant to be doing it, the universe will come along and somehow ensure that it doesn't happen. And in this instance, this man decided, oh my God, this, this do-goody woman, <laughs> uh, I think I'm just going to avoid her. And so I never again saw him. But also I think uh, his whole, you know, cover was blown when people realised he was not homeless and and he probably decided it was best not to um, show up in that area again. But that was a lesson for me to not assume that people need my help or even want my help. And, and I think to remember that even needy people have free will. I wish you a really happy day and I will be back again very soon with another SMS. Bye for now.